I told you guys when I came here first, th what the focus was was victory. And so regardless of how my leg feels or how it went, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I'm here and, and victorious, absolutely. Well, you know, and after hearing the, the post-fight speech out there, I feel like, man, we've been asking all the wrong questions all, all the wrong times questions. That we, we've been seeing you out here. You all know, the so wrong questions. It almost feels uh, bad to keep asking about the fight, but one last one from the fight before I want to ask you more about this yeah. journey. It was that, that, that leg kick when he was down, it felt like it was pure rage and frustration, like a release of stuff that's been building up in your mind. I mean... Was there any emotion in that, or was it just a matter of, I knew this is a quick way to finish the fight at this point because it's going to do some instinct, serious hurt? Instinct, man. That's all it is, is instinct. It's the same thing, like, the same type of kick happened in the Ultimate Fighter, the same, you know, like, my last fight. It's just instinct, you know? So, like, I think, yes, there was a part of rage within who I am, but, uh, you know, I didn't, I wasn't thinking anything, like, necessarily bad. It was just, sure. you know, like, I know that I just, and I felt better. He was on, like, you know, he, he rolled over onto his back. And for me, I'd rather, you know, throw a kick than try to sink in my hooks and, and get a rear naked choke. You know, like, I just, I like to strike. So that was, like, another opportunity to just strike. Yeah. And I know that, you know, going back to, I guess, the journey now, you know, I know a lot of us, I, maybe we've come to forget that the, you got into this and you got into it because you were trying to lose weight. Yeah, man. You know, and I guess... You know, is it the fact that, I mean, I guess why now ha, that has something happened that it's felt like it, it's bubbled back up underneath that the emotions and the thought process of this journey that maybe we're not doing the right job to, to bring that out and give you a platform to, to say that sort of stuff? I don't, I don't know who's doing the right job or not, but it's like how many people are there that were in – similar positions i mean we we hear about certain fighter stories but then it's just okay well that's cool on to the next yeah you know or talk about the fight and it's like no man we're still people and like yes i come in here and i put on performances and 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 people know me as fighting but it's like that whole part of man when i like you know 300 pounds with not a hope or a dream or a dollar in my pocket step into an MMA gym to try to change my life. And, and every time I'm in here, that's still a growth. It's not like I've just surpassed that person. Every single day I have to wake up to that person. Every single day I have to fight that person. You know what I mean? Sure. And it's like just because I'm in the UFC and just because I fight doesn't mean that that person's long and go long, long gone, you know? I still have demons. I still have doubts. That's why when John Morgan asked me that question, I almost got pissed off. Do you have doubts? Fuck yeah, I have doubts. What do you think, man? You know what I mean? Yeah, I have fucking doubts. Everybody does. When you're doing something good in life, when you're doing something that's you're trying to surpass everything else and do something that's meaningful, fuck yeah, you're going to have doubts. You know? So, like, to just sit here and just get asked, like, almost like a petty question, like, things, I'm like, yeah, man. So, like, I'm still the guy... Although I've, I've grown and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm taking on more challenges and I'm growing as a man, it's like my fight is different than everybody else's. Everybody else has their own fight, you know? And, like, for me, part of that is how do you get a man off of the couch from killing himself with eating trashy food and smoking cigarettes and watching porn and doing all this just a toxic shit to trying to be an, a, a, an all-star athlete you know it doesn't just the, fl the switch doesn't just flip like that it's a constant progression and I think that there's m millions of people out there that kind of need help in those steps of like hey guide me here yeah I'm cheering for you but you know what like like how do I do it what's next you know and I think what part of what you said there, I think one of the greatest things that you said is we do tend to think that, all right, you're here now. We, we forget that the battle is still ongoing, that the, all those things that maybe put you there in the first place are always there bubbling underneath the surface or something. And Man, I guess as human beings, yeah, we have scars, we have trauma, we have things that just repeat in our mind over and over and over again, every single last one of us, from parental stuff to whatever, to being bullied to whatever. It doesn't just disappear overnight. 
you know? And so, like, now that I've gotten to a place where I'm working my ass off and trying to just defeat these, like, mental, you know, these mental things that are trying to grab at me, I want to be able to help people in the process of, hey, this is how you do it. You know, this is how I did it, and this is what I'm willing to do to help you get out of that position so that maybe you can go be something else that you want to be in life. And obviously, being a champion, obviously, you know, the, uh, the platform might get bigger, but which is more important to you right now, using where you're at right now to make a difference to others, or is, the, is that goal of, you know, obviously, you know, uh, you want to be a champion. You, you know, want that platform. You want that money. You want that pay. But which is more important? What is the better focus for you now to make a difference in somebody else or to make it to a championship? I'd much rather have, would, like, I would much rather... I would die happy in my grave if I never touched a championship belt, but I knew that I touched a 2,000 people's lives, a million people's lives that, you know, like, you know what, from what Khalil did and helped me out, like, I'm a better person, you know, or I've, or, you know, I, I would much rather have helped people out and help people to, 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 to be, you know, just better or whatever than to, than to be a champion. But my motivation, obviously, I do. I would love to be a champion and just reach the pinnacle of this sport. But if if I had to choose between, hey, you can be a champion or you can help countless people's lives, I'd much rather take the lives over the belt any day, any day. So how are you trying? I guess I guess the in initial next step. What way are you trying to to deliver it? Are you trying to do a podcast? Or you want to do a book? Well, here's, you want to do. Here's the thing, man. Like, so. With everything, it takes money, right? Everything takes money. And for me, if I'm not winning fights, then for one, it's like I make half of my money, and two, nobody gives a shit. You guys ain't gonna interview Carl Robertson right now, are you? Probably not. The person who loses the fight kinda gets forgotten about. You don't get an interview, you don't get this, you don't get that. It's like you kinda just, only the winners get to, to say a piece. So that's why my motivation today, too, was to win, so that I can start talking about what I want to do. And because I know that if I lose, if I don't make the money, and I don't really get to say what I want to say. So with that being said, like, yeah, man, it takes money. It takes people who also want to help. And let me be the person that's out there being the voice or out there doing the work. But I do need the funding to be able to put on, you know, like little like things in the park for people here in Vegas, local workouts, whatever. Hey, sponsor this, da 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 da. You know, like like just money and people who also want to make a difference and also who want to help. But it's mostly money. It really is. So like. You know, whether it's like, okay, I have to train for a fight and I only get X amount of dollars. I have zero endorsements. I have zero sponsors. Everything that I'm doing is out of pocket from what I pay for or for what I make from my fights. So I can't hire someone to help me. I can't hire a publicist. I can't hire someone who knows how to help me put together a book, you know, or, or write a book or or I can't hire my own people to uh, help me to do a YouTube channel or podcast or, you know, all these things because I am also a man who supports my entire family and I love doing it, you know? Like, so it, there's just a lot of stuff and, like, sometimes there's a lot of weight for the, you know, the, 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 the mission and the story that I want to leave behind at the end of all of this. There's a lot to take on, and I think it's just, it's more like I need, I need people who are, who are also on the same page. I need a little bit of time, and I need a little bit of money, and I need a team of people who, who also want to, you know, make a difference, man. Make, do something good, you know. All this shit going on, like, do something good, man. It's like, a, it's like sort of a catch-22, you know, you need to have time to be able to focus on doing that stuff, but you also need to keep fighting so you can have the money to do that sort of yeah. thing. So I guess, you know, and, and I don't want to hog too much of your time, but I guess what is the initial next step? Are you, do you want to take some time off to try to work well, on some other stuff, or do you want to take some time or just hop back in the gym and get right back at it? So I'm, I'm so I have my coach, I have my coaches, right? And, you know, I want to be able to, you know, train and, and, and keep training and, and, and I'm, it's, it's possible to do everything at one time, right? It's possible to train and to, and to have, you know, projects going on that are, that are doing good and, and helping communities and things like that. Um, 
Sorry, I'm like all my emotions and, and thoughts are kind of going. Please ask the question yeah. again so I can answer it on. on no, I guess it's just you know what the, what the initial next steps. What's what's your next focus for your time and your energy going to be? I mean, is it? So that's what I meant to say. Okay, so um, if you followed me, you saw that like you know years ago when I was in Thailand, I started you know like instead of selling Curl Hill Roundtree merch, I started a thing called Super Champ because that was a nickname that was given to me. I started making merchandise called Super Champ. What I've done with that is like, I've now created like a Discord channel. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Discord, but like the Discord is for now, now for me, anybody who like purchases my merch is like, now I can talk to them directly. Hey, what are you guys looking for? Workout tips, anything else that like, so really the next step is building a community of people who are fans of me and want to just be closer and be connected and like join just, let's move forward together, you know? Like, I wanna be able to keep, you know, this community of people who support me and we just continue to move forward. Even when I'm done with the UFC, it's like, you know, we've, we've, we've just moved together as a unit and just people just keep coming so that later on down the line, it's like, you know, it's like we've all helped each other get to a certain point. That to me sounds really freaking cool, man, you know? Just like, yeah, you were a fan of my fighting, but now you're a fan, or now you're a friend with another person who was a fan, and now all together we're like a family, and now all together we're as a community, we're moving towards making an impact or changing or whatever it is. You know, whatever is good, that's what we're moving towards. That's an incredible sentiment, man, and I appreciate you you giving of that. Are you still based out of Vegas? Where are you, where are you in now? When I train, when I'm in training camp, I live here. I have an apartment here. When you know, in the off season or the time in between, I live in New York City. Okay. I was gonna say, I'm based out of Vegas and well, I'll take it offline. I would love to help you. I love the fact that you wanna help give back if there's anything I could ever do, but thank you for sharing. And I appreciate that, uh, you know, uh, just talking about your struggle, you know, and things, because you're right, we, we have so many fights that we tend to move right, right on and we think about something else. So I apologize that we as media aren't asking the right questions to, to give you the platform because I feel that your story is not, you're not unique in the fact that uh, others are probably have the same story that we're not asking the right questions. Yeah, so man, I mean, like, you know, my, my story is, is, it's, it is what it is, but I'm sure that there's a lot of other fighters that would also love to tell, you know, their, their piece. And um, I don't know who's in control, but I really think that, man, you guys should at least give the losing fighter an option to come in here and talk to you guys after the fight at least give them, man, I don't know if there's something powerful in, in someone who's just trained eight, nine, 10, 11 weeks that put in all the work and didn't get the result that they want. I'm sure there's a powerful message in something that they could say post fight. So even just asking them like, hey, if you want to, you don't have to, but giving them the option to speak, what did you learn from this or whatever it is, like what do you think you could have done differently, da 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 da, da. Because, man, there's people out there that are watching that could also grow from that. I think it's important that both people, you know, get spoken to. Seriously. You're right. And there's times I know we have asked. I know that we could probably do a better job of asking. But I know if, you know, if any of them are actually watching, if you guys ever asked to come here, they would bring you here. I think most of the time they just feel that the fighter doesn't want to have to deal with us asking questions. But I think if any fighter, if they did lose, would ask to say, I want to still go speak to the media, of course, they'll still bring them out. We just assume that they don't want to talk to us, so that's why we don't bother them. But maybe we should do a better job of asking that sort of thing. So Yeah, maybe. You know what I mean? I, I just, I, yeah, maybe. But it'd be really cool to be able to hear from, you know, some favorite fighters that may have taken a loss, but hear, like, how do you deal with it, you know, immediately right after? What do you, what do you think and what are you going through? It, I think it'd be really helpful. Hey, hello. <clears throat> Alex, what's up? Um, I just have one, one, one question for you, man. Um, for the next Khalil that's maybe sitting on his couch right now, a little bit overweight, um, what's your message to him? Hmm. It might sound a bit cliche, or we've heard this before, but like your life matters. <sighs> Your life matters.
you can be special. You can be strong. You can be seen. You can be heard. Life is beautiful. If you make it that way, it doesn't have to be how everybody else makes it seem. Stick around. <laughs> Stick around another day. I would have a lot of, a lot of things like that to say, man. Thank you. Absolutely.